ambiguous loss refers to a situation where someone is physically present but psychologically absent. So that might be an example would be like a person uh, who has Alzheimer's disease and they look okay uh, physically, but in, in another way they're very impaired cognitively. So they're there physically, but they're not there mentally. And um, also refers to situations where, which uh, Pauline Boss studied uh, wives of soldiers missing in action. These are situations where people went off to combat and they disappeared. They could have been dead, they could have been wounded, uh, trying to get back to base. Um, they could have been in a prisoner of war camp. Uh, these are situations where the person was uh, psychologically present in the family, still considered part of the family, but the family didn't really know if the person was alive or dead. And so the ambiguity is uh, just refers to the fact that there's a lot of uncertainty about the person. Um, there's a lot of uncertainty about, about them. One uh, issue that came to mind was there was a study that I've cited a lot. It was done probably 30 years ago by a group of nurses. And those nurses surveyed wives and mothers of people who had traumatic brain injury and stroke. And it was interesting because when the wives filled out the survey, about um, a third of them said that they were married but had no husband. And then about a fourth of them said that they were married to a stranger. And when I looked at that survey, I realized that Boss's theory or her ideas about ambiguity of loss were, were also reflected in the brain injury literature. You know, in our, in our society, we have, um, we have um, beliefs about what needs to be done when a person dies. We have rituals, we say goodbye, we grieve. And what happens with ambiguous loss is the person is still physically alive, but they're a very different person. And the fact that they're still alive makes it very difficult to grieve for that person that they used to be.